My name is uh, Tobias Ellis Tominge. And uh, on Friday, I saw uh, the Twitter post that Tobias put up. Um, and that's how I noticed that, um, that uh, I think it was Tyler and um, one more guy had, had created the PowerShell IoT. Uh, and I had one of those laying around with uh, a couple of LED matrices that I uh, had bought probably a couple of years ago. So I uh, thought I could make something out of it. So <clears throat> I'll just show um, a bit of the code uh, first. Um, uh, this LED matrix is using a protocol called I squared C, which is a really old serial bus protocol. And um, I2C devices, um, hmm? of course. Here, it's just slow. More. So, uh, I2C devices are uh, has an address on uh, on um, uh, on the IC, I2C bus, and uh, and this device has a hard coded address of zero uh, x seventy. So, so to connect to it, uh, you just um, use this PowerShell IoT command, which is called get i2c device, and then uh, the ID, which is the device address. Uh, <clears throat> on i2c devices, there are a bunch of registers that, um, that can be set to contain data. And you can also get data from those registers. So uh, the PowerShell IoT module uh, contains uh, both uh, get I2C registers and set I2C register commands. So that's basically what we're using to light up the LEDs on the screen. Um, <clears throat> the biggest part of <laughs> actually figuring out how it works is that, oh, sorry, Al. Uh, the drivers that are on the internet for all of these devices are generally seed drivers written for Adafruit or for, uh, for Raspberry Pi. Yeah. And, um, and, um, and also probably a couple of Python drivers and stuff like that. But there was no PowerShell drivers for it, so I had to write some. And that meant reading the documentation of the device, which is written by Chinese people. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of trial error went into this. <laughs> and um, there are a couple of registers on this device that behave kind of like quantum particles. It's, if you interact with them, they toggle. <laughs> And that was uh, also part of, the, part of the trial and error process. But to run it on the IoT device, I created a module, which is called, uh, uh, can we make the screen in Putty bigger as well? Um, it's a long time since I've played with Putty, I think. Oh, that's better. So the module is called oh. the module is called um, somewhere PSIoT HT one six K three three, which is the HT one six K three three is the header board of the LED matrix. So you just import it, and then uh, you use select. Um, HD uh, device, which will connect to uh, the 0x70 address on the I2, I2C bus. And um, we can also, that will also initialize the display, so we can uh, uh, turn it on afterwards. And uh, it also has an inbuilt feature of a blink rate, so we'll set that off. And then we can. Uh... Oh, my keyboard got disconnected. There we go. And then we can um, set individual LEDs. So, uh, row and column. Then it should uh, light up <laughs> one LED. <Yeah>. Woo! <laughs> there's uh, there's nothing in the um, 
uh, in the driver at the moment to turn LEDs off, but <laughs> <laughs> you can clear the entire um, display, which will... So I created also some, uh, some pre-built sprites for it, so we can um, uh, do... Ah, there we go. PS logo, which should light up. Hey! And, of course, in the spirit of this com conference, uh, I also made a uh, sad joy. <laughs> That's it. <laughs>So I take the, the same pass uh, as Tom and um, he show you how, to, um, how we can connect to um, an E2C device. So I have the same, um, the same command. I can um, create uh, a device with um, uh, an address and uh, then I can uh, query this device with a register address and then I can set the, the register. This, this sequence is to, um, is to initialize the, the device. In fact, the device is uh, an accelerometer. Um, <laughs> then I can uh, get the, um, the output from the device with, uh, with this command. So, um, trust me, it works. <laughs> And uh, then um, I wrote a, a, a small module to uh, wrap this command into um, human readable commands. So it's a um, very simple module. I just have some um, um, a variable to indicate where the register, are, what, what's the register address, and I have some command to uh, then uh, initialize the. Um, the device. So, we have to run uh, PowerShell with the uh, studio because uh, we access the, um, the hardware. Uh, yes, I can, probably. Is it okay? Thank you. And then I ask the accelerator to um, the accelerometer. Thank you. Sorry. I get um, directly the correct value. And I can uh, use this value uh, in this object. So now I have uh, a function to uh, get data from the accelerometer. I can um, use some, um, some PowerShell. I'm sorry because the um, terminal in uh, Visual uh, Studio Code doesn't uh, display what I want, so I have to, uh, to do the same uh, command on another one. I don't know where it is. Yeah. Yes, I probably can too. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's not my laptop. Uh. <laughs> You, you will see, uh, anyway. So now I have an object I can query and use it with standard PowerShell commands. 
and display the um, display the acceleration of the of the device. Okay. So you you can see I'm a bit nervous, but uh, okay, I will uh, put it down before I break it. Uh, okay. So but um, we. We talk about uh, IoT, so uh, what can I do uh, to uh, what, what can I do to uh, to send this data to um, to internet? So we created a, a small Azure function to get the uh, to get the data. I hope the Wi-Fi is okay. Let's try. Now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Julian, we need to interrupt here. Yeah. Uh, so, but, ah, oh, there, here. Yes. You, you need an <laughs> extra push, right? It's the time for other function to, to wake up. So, <laughs> and the last one. Hope this works. Uh, it's not the right one. We need to still interrupt because there is someone who would like to thank you for being so spontaneous, but that person has another track coming up, or another session coming up in track one. So please, Bruce, could you come up? Thank you. Uh, congratulations, guys. Uh, really, really fantastic job uh, of a very new area with PowerShell, um, especially on the Mac. No, it's <laughs> awesome. Yes. So uh, to thank you, I'd like to give you copies of my book. I've, I've signed both of them, but I haven't signed them to you guys yet specifically. So if you catch me later, I can do that. Uh, anyway, congratulations. Thank you very much for doing this presentation. And now I'd like to uh, uh, have a historic picture with these two pioneers and PowerShell inventor Jeffrey Snover, if I may. Steve, where are you, Steve? Can you, can you guys come up? So always at the cutting edge at PowerShell Conference EU. <laughs> so we, since we don't have a photog photographer, could you take pictures, please, and share with us? Yeah, this is great stuff. I got to say, uh, you know, one of the things we always knew about PowerShell was that it was designed with the mindset that the world was, the world is, and the world always will be a messy place. And so you say, oh, well, you know, there's some technology that everything's going to use. And the answer is no. As long as you have existing stuff, that stuff's not going to use the, the new technology. And, in, and if, as long as there's innovation, there's always going to be new technology. And so PowerShell was explicitly designed to be that glue language, to be able to manage the stuff of the past, the way things are managed today, and the way things that are going to be managed in the future. And then to provide a coherent experience, a coherent scripting experience, a com coherent command line experience. And this, I think, is a great demonstration of that, right? We did not sit back and design PowerShell for IoT devices or these protocols at all. I don't even know what these protocols are that you mentioned. And yet, because of the, the flexibility of the model, you can take those, produce a level of, of, of abstractions that everybody in the room, right, those are commandlets you know how to do, those are scripts you knew how to do. So now you can take your skills 
and manage IoT. And that was the thing I was trying to highlight in my keynote. You're learning a set of skills that can be applied to different domains. So when you, you're managing Windows today, but if you want to manage IoT tomorrow, you don't have to learn a new set of skills. You can bring those skills with you. Anyway, so I think this is just a great example of one of the core principles of PowerShell. Thank you.